Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to another Jane Austen July video. Today I'm going to be ranking Jane Austen's heroes. So recently on this channel I did a ranking of Jane Austen's heroines from my least favourite to my most favourite and today I thought I would do the same for Jane Austen's heroes, going from my least favourite of her heroes um, to my favourite at the top. I was umming and ahhing about which characters count as heroes of Jane Austen's books and I've basically gone for the um, endgame love interests of the heroines from the other video with one sort of complicated exception. That does mean that this video is going to be more spoilery than the other video because I am going to talk about which characters from which books is the central love interest that's going to end up with the main characters. So if you haven't read all of Jane Austen's books, um, including Lady Susan, maybe don't continue with this video, um, but if you have read all of Jane Austen's books then come and be welcome and let's talk about Jane Austen's heroes. So my least favourite Jane Austen hero, um, the Jane Austen hero that I find the least interesting um, and I don't think is the best written um, is Edward Ferris from Sense Sensibility. I feel like Edward Ferris is possibly the most underdeveloped love interest that one of her protagonists has um, and I always find it interesting in Sense Sensibility because I feel like Eleanor is slightly more the main character than Marianne but I feel like Colonel Brandon and John Willoughby are much more developed as characters than Edward Ferris is um, and we do see a bit of Edward Ferris but I feel like I don't know, in my head I always wish there was like another four chapters at the beginning where we got to know Ebba Ferris a little bit better. I feel like we kind of meet Edward and we see a bit of um, Eleanor and Marianne discussing him but we don't see much of him and then he's just gone for a while and then he comes back later. There are some things I like about Edward as a character. I think he's honourable and I think he tries to do the right thing but I do wish that we got to know him a bit better as a character um, and I do sometimes feel like I get a bit frustrated with his character not standing up for himself more um, but I don't know. Maybe I would feel like I understood him better if we knew more about him as a character um, but I just feel like I want a bit more of Edward Ferris so he's probably my least favourite Jane Austen hero. My second least favourite Jane Austen hero controversially is Henry Tilney from Northanger Abbey. I don't really like Henry Tilney and I feel like this is controversial because I feel like he's a lot of people's favourites and sometimes I just find his dialogue really frustrating and um, I don't know why. It's not that I don't think he's well written, I think he's a great character and I like his dynamic with Catherine Morland um, and I do really like their relationship throughout the book but every now and then Henry Tilney will say things and I'll just find him a bit frustrating and I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's like that I just don't find his wit very engaging sometimes. I don't know. Um, or the way he teases Catherine sometimes. Every now and then I find a little bit patronising. Um, however, I do think he is an interesting character. He's just not my favourite. As I mentioned in my video where I was ranking the heroines, Northanger Abbey is probably my least favourite Jane Austen book. So maybe that's also why he's just not up there for me. Next at number six, we have Edmund Bertram from Mansell Park, who I feel like is possibly most people's least favourite Jane Austen hero. He is not the greatest. Um, I do not think he is worthy of Fanny Price in the slightest because Fanny Price is my favourite Jane Austen heroine and she is amazing and she deserves better. And every now and then I'm like, would she have been happy with Henry Crawford? Probably not, but you know, maybe. Um, however, I do think Edmund Bertram is quite an interesting character. I feel like he's interesting because on paper he should be right for Fanny and he kind of is, but also he has his flaws and his failings and I feel like he can't always judge right and I feel like that is explored. I do sometimes wish that we got a little bit more of his character development. I feel like a bit like, you know, a character like Mr. Darcy, he does have a kind of arc in this novel where he does change and he does kind of come to realise that his initial thoughts about people were not necessarily correct. Um, but I do feel like we don't see as much of it as we do with Mr. Darcy. Um, and I also feel like he can at times be a little bit um, frustrating, especially um, in the kind of amateur dramatic section of Mansfield Park where him and Fanny are both like this is wrong we really shouldn't be doing this it's not appropriate um, and then the moment Mary Crawford is like I'm happy to do it and then Edmund just like completely turns around and I think he does recognise his own weakness in doing that um, but that does kind of frustrate me but also I do think he's quite an interesting character even though I do feel like he is not worthy of Fanny Price but there we go and number four um, wasn't certain whether or not I was going to include him but I thought I would include Reginald de Courcy from Lady Susan because he is 
sort of the hero of Lady Susan. Obviously, if you've read Lady Susan, which I hope you have, because I'm about to spoil it if you haven't, um, obviously, if you've read Lady Susan, Reginald Corsi does not end up with Lady Susan at the end, so that is obviously, you know, a big difference to all the other heroes I'm talking about today. But I do still think he is the hero of the book, because he is, like, the primary love interest, even though she ends up with um, Sir James, um, and her daughter ends up with Reginald Corsi. And every now and then I think about the fact that Lady Susan includes a mother and daughter who are, like, interested in the same man, and I'm like, this is, this is pretty scandalous stuff, Jane Austen. Excellent, excellent stuff. I both really like and really dislike Reginald as a character. He's very frustrating because he falls under Lady Susan's spell so quickly, um, and you kind of want him to see through her a bit more. And obviously he does in the end, but he requires a lot of help. But I feel like he is kind of a little bit not exactly spineless, but isn't very good at, like, making up his own mind about things. And I feel he doesn't know his own mind very well. But I do think he is quite an interesting character, and I feel like following him and his kind of changing feelings towards Lady Susan, and then to Frederica as well, I feel like it is really interesting. So even though I do find him a bit frustrating, I do think he's a really interesting character. I thought I'd include him on this list, because, you know, he doesn't get spoken about much, does he? At number four, we have Colonel Brandon in Sense and Sensibility. I really like Colonel Brandon as a character. I think he is interestingly drawn and well done, and I feel like the complexities around his past are quite an interesting element of Sense and Sensibility that I enjoy. I also feel like his unrequited love for Marianne throughout the bulk of the book um, is really interesting to read about, and is drawn really well and another thing that I really like in Colonel Brandon as a character is his and Eleanor's friendship like I feel like there's a good argument to be made that wouldn't Eleanor and Colonel Brandon have suited each other maybe a little bit better and who knows I am happy with the ending as it stands whether Marianne and Colonel Brandon will be happy who knows will she ever love him as much as she loved Willoughby I think possibly not however I do think that Colonel Brandon's friendship with Eleanor is a really nice element of the book especially because within Jason Austen's books we don't get to see very many male female friendships um that have no romantic element um and so it is actually really nice to see the kind of friendship between Eleanor and Colonel Brandon and I feel like their friendship in the clear respect he has for her is something that I really like about Colonel Brandon. I do also think he is an interesting character for being um, a slightly like older, sadder character. Sometimes I feel like Colonel Brandon is like quite similar to Anne Elliot. I feel like there's a good um, crossover parody there where Colonel Brandon and Anne Elliot would make a good couple um, in the way that like he has had this disappointment earlier on in life um, and therefore it's kind of like tinged his life with sadness um, and in Sense Sensibility we're kind of seeing him starting to get over that for the first time and starting to kind of move on with his life. And I feel like that is a really nice element and I feel like he has a lot more kind of story and background to him than some of Jane Austen's other heroes. Definitely in, within Sense and Sensibility, he's got an awful lot more character than Edward Ferris. But there we go. I think Colonel Brandon's a great character. I really like him. Let's move on. At number three, we have Captain Wentworth, who is a wonderful character um, and one that I really, really like. I feel like I've heard lots of people say that they think the letter Wentworth writes to Anne is like the most romantic thing in um, all of Jane Austen. I do think it is pretty up there. I do think it is a really great moment. Um, and really well done. The complexities of both their emotions are done so well in Persuasion and I feel like you do get a good sense of his emotion um, and his complexities and his flaws, you know, basically he is in love with Anne throughout the whole book but he is too bitter to show it and he is angry with her still after all this time um, and that's why he kind of pays attention to Louisa Musgrove. But I do think it's really interesting that also when he thinks um, that he has been unduly paying attention to Louisa Musgrove, he is kind of appalled and thinks, you know, am I going to have to marry her out of honour like I've done a dishonourable thing by paying attention that I didn't mean? Um, and I feel like that which is subtly in the background, um, is kind of really interesting as well. But I also feel like his love for Anne and his kind of like steadiness and steadfastness is a really interesting and a really good part of his character. And his letter is very excellent. So Captain Wentworth gets number three on the list. At number two is Mr. Darcy from Pride and Prejudice, who I think is an excellent character. There's a lot that I like about Mr. Darcy. He has a great character arc. He obviously develops a lot over the course of the book and changes a lot as a character, which I love. I feel like Jane Austen writes a wonderful character development. But I find him really interesting and kind of compelling all the way through. I think Jane Austen very purposely like gives you glimpses into Mr. Darcy's head in the first third of the book because at that point he is standoffish and he is being proud and he is being sexually awkward and he is being rude. Um, but also we get to see inside his head and we get to see his growing admiration for Elizabeth Bennet um, and therefore we do get to 
sympathise with him um, and then we don't get to see inside his head through much of the rest of the book after that first kind of third um, and I think that is an interesting way that he is written. I also think Mr Darcy's really interesting because obviously from the beginning he is very proud, he is a snob, um, he does judge people unfairly but I also think he is shy and socially awkward and I feel like the way that is dealt with um, is kind of quite nice. You know, there's that bit where him and Elizabeth are talking and he says that he is not good at talking with strangers um, and that he finds it hard to talk to new people um, and I feel like in a way one of the reasons why Elizabeth and him get on and why he falls for Elizabeth is because she doesn't find it hard to talk to strangers um, so she will tease him when she doesn't know him um, because she is happy to and she is witty and she can engage people in conversation and she doesn't have that kind of shyness that he has but actually I feel like his shyness is explored really well um, and I feel like the kind of line between shyness and snobbery and shyness and pride and to what extent he is afraid of talking to people and to what extent he doesn't want to and to what extent he uses like his pride and his snobbery as a shield I feel like that is really well explored like I feel like he's a very complicated character and I really like him a lot so Mr Darcy gets number two spot on the list excellent character I really like him judgmental yes but also means well and learns his lesson and is a very very engaging character to read about but finally at number one my favorite Jane Austen hero is probably Mr Knightley from Emma which is interesting because Emma is not my favorite Jane Austen book Emma is not my favorite Jane Austen heroine but I love Mr Knightley hugely I do think that Mr Knightley is too good for Emma um, in the same way that Fanny Price is definitely too good for Edmund and Bertram um, however I do really like Mr Knightley as a character and I do think he is really well done I really like him and Emma's relationship and I feel like basically within Emma every scene where Mr Knightley's in it is my favorite scene because I feel like he's a really well drawn character I feel like their relationship is really interesting I feel like he has the kind of moral sense and judgment um, that she sometimes needs but also she has the fun and liveliness that he sometimes needs um, and I feel like they complement each other well because of that and in some ways I think Emma is about two friends falling in love who haven't quite noticed um, each other in that way and suddenly start to but also it's a bit weird and I kind of really like that about Emma and I kind of like the way Mr Knightley feels about her and how he both like loves her but also like wants her to be the best version of herself that she isn't a lot of the time um so I feel like they kind of need each other in different ways which I like. I feel like he has steadfastness and kindness which I like but I also feel like he doesn't have the same kind of snobberies that Emma has or the same kind of prejudices that Emma has um I really like the way he kind of treats and is kind to Miss Bates and Jane Fairfax and the way that he kind of talks about Robert Martin etc like I feel like Mr Knightley has um, more time for certain people than Emma does um, in a way that is really interestingly explored um, and kind of means that you know that he is kind from the start and in general I just think Mr Knightley is a great character well written and really engaging and yeah probably my favourite Jane Austen hero so there we have it that is my ranking of Jane Austen's heroes do let me know down in the comments what you think do you agree do you disagree who is your favourite and who is your least favourite Jane Austen hero and that's it for now thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video yeah.